Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to a life and today's talk is going to be a talk on intuitive feeding and developing a healthy relationship with food. There are many lectures on the subject and many probably beautiful books that probably are covering many aspects of it but here I want to cover the spiritual aspect of it and I want to talk about developing a healthy relationship with food from a spiritual or Ali perspective and let's call it Ali perspective which is weird perspective so and I'm fully aware of that I don't have your uh, normal path of thinking type of thing it's always a different angle I look at things but I'm gonna bring that angle today of course because I that's the angle I have um, uh, when we, um, uh, young women especially, but also men are not uh, uh, excluded from this, develop oftentimes eating disorders or unhealthy relationship with food, self-abusive uh, behavior, um, unacceptance of the body and just a mentality of dieting or constantly trying to change the body, improve the body or resist the body. So I feel that when we mature, a good way to start obviously is with a healthy nurturing things to the body that have nothing to do with food um, yoga but not you know calorie burning yoga never um, never try to fix your weight through calorie burning the only reason why i like cardio is because it does um uh, it does bring uh, build the cardiovascular system it, it can speed up the metabolism but that is because the body is functioning better but it is not to just burn off a dinner or something like that that is not a sustainable or a pleasant place to be maybe it's sustainable for some people because i do see older people in the gym back in the day when i was in my 20s and going to the gym there was definitely older people in the gym that were quite in a good healthy range and they were killing it with cardio so maybe it is sustainable but it's a very anxious place to be at we want to come back down to the reality of things and the reality of things is i always say that we are very uh, this body is very temporary uh, our life is very temporary and it will come to an end before we know it but our spirit soul is eternal so reminding ourselves of that can allow us to just pause and enjoy the present moment remember about the present moment and savor it accept the imperfections of the present moment and accept that our body might want to be in a place that is a little different from the place in our head maybe we don't look exactly like a magazine cover but where we are at is amazingly beautiful we can compare to just some images to the <laughs> To the images we have to see ourselves in flesh and accept that is beautiful another thing is um yes uh, the time we spend here is very temporary and i think it's a beautiful uh it's beautiful time this earth is not just suffering uh the suffering part of this earthly experience is to uh season our soul and allow us to find different ways to function as a soul so it is a very learning experience and it only becomes suffering when we resist it or when when we resist the lessons or when we resist our path and when we don't see things in perspective so even the challenges are opportunities and again it is very temporary it will all end really soon and the point here is we are in a very beautiful um heavenly uh, place and appreciating it, enjoying it, enjoying it, and savoring it is very important because time comes when we have to depart from here and move on with our journey um, or a transition, a gate, a passage to another place. Uh, we we want to look back and say, "Oh my God, I really enjoyed all of this. It was beautiful. I enjoyed the bird sounds and the clouds in the sky." and the beauty all around me so finding one of the tips i'll give you is to find nourishing things for your uh, self to do they have nothing to do with food just nourishing movement uh, drawing oh, my friend is coming uh, also developing reverence for food food is really beautiful and it's a gift 
And once we understand that, we'll never resist it or uh, feel like it's bad for us. So eating whole beautiful foods, healthy foods, filled with vibrance, quality foods that are local and oftentimes even uh, more affordable than the other foods because when we learn to source them, we can pick them ourselves, um, forage them or just buy them locally in season on sale when uh, the season is uh, at its peak and they're local. So develop um, reverence for nature. To, be, to me, that is the most healing attitude I've ever had in my life. When you have reverence for nature, you will never look at any natural food and fear that you will gain weight or it will be damaging to you in any way. You would savor it and be so grateful for having it. Also, prayer. Prayer for the abundance that you've been gifted is also very beautiful. And another thing is sometimes when you're not perfect to have Per the attitude that what you're doing is perfect at the moment so if I'm somewhere and I eat something that is less than um, vibrant and amazing I still think this is going to nourish me this is beautiful this is nutrition I'm gonna extract from this my body in its wisdom will extract from this exactly what it needs maybe it's something um, maybe it's some crackers or something random and there was nothing else because I was traveling or something I will um, again I would mindfully choose the healthy things and I'll try to buy fruit and uh, local produce but if you're eating something say uh, french fries or something like that you still will have the attitude of this is going to nourish me and my body will take from this exactly what it needs but tomorrow I'll go back to vibrancy another thing is um, to listen to your body in the ways that what I say really doesn't really really matter because you personally will develop a personal relationship with food so you're not taking bits and pieces of what other people are saying and kind of applying it dogmatically but you're starting to understand things internally from uh, in your core feeling things and then things will start making perfect sense uh, to you rather than trying to apply some philosophy idealistic philosophy that you have heard about so always think in abundance if i bring abundance into my diet i will nourish my body i will be energetic i'll be vibrant but also that abundance will translate into other areas of my life and on a practical level I always have food for me if i don't have good food in the house i'll still eat and it will not be good food so if i'm here and i'm getting hungry I'll open the fridge and there will be, uh, right now I pre-made a massage salad, so there is already massage salad and there is tofu and I'm soaking soybeans because I'm going to make my first soy milk and tofu and silk and tofu, but and also a food preparation because food preparation is poetry, it's, um, it's meditation, it's appreciation for food, it's savoring a uh, savoring and really taking the time to look at it, to admire it, to have reverence for nature. To uh, I, when I was a teenager, I realized how profound the design of fruit is. It's just profound. If you take a strawberry with all the seeds and the constellations inside when you cut it through, with a little stem on top, the smell, imagine a chef trying to create that. It will never happen. The water to sweetness ratio the incredible aroma that cannot be created by human by human the amazing shape the shape is so amazing and also because vibrations work like that when something um, is looking a certain way it affects a similar part of the body that has the similar vibration so it's formed in the same way and of course on a practical level i always say Look at chronometer and make sure that you're getting uh, nutrients because it's a learning process. You can't just shift your food into fresh, amazing produce and expect to really hit all your nutrients. Especially on a vegan diet, you have to always, always track your zinc. It tends to be low on certain diets if you have a lot of pumpkin seeds in your diet. And there is a random items I add to my diet that tend to spike up my um, zinc like chia and paprika and... Um, I forget at the moment, but uh, asparagus, there is random items that I add, like, they're secondary to my diet. Um, they say, say they're spices or something on the side, uh, cacao powder, such, such items that are not necessarily a part of the 
meal but they're either a latte or something I sprinkle on top um, but I sprinkle a lot and those things uh, end up adding a lot of uh, nutrients uh, that are a little more on the rare side so you do have to pay attention to your nutrients you always have to be everything learning intellectually spiritual feeling in your body and emotionally understanding your food um, not only feeling it with your intuition but also how it makes you feel how it translates in your body and in your emotions and physically you have to be practical about it analytical so all the types of the minds are good to apply you can be you can i've met a lot of people that are just one only analytical or only intuitive but really having developing both of those qualities is key is key on a spiritual journey you cannot be just physical and uh, or just spiritual and only be in the clouds and think that you're going to evolve somehow by abandoning your first chakras or the other way you think only ferraris and you abandon everything from here up neither one of those will serve you in the long in the big picture but finding both and integrating everything into one because you're a one being that is everything so integrating and practically expressing this is so very important and it's part of our path and part of my teachings are that i teach spirituality but I also teach practical physicality and those things really can awaken the body and have us uh, awaken intellectually uh, emotionally mentally and physically do you have anything else to say about intuitive relationship? I think the most important thing and the reason why I wanted to show the video is just to say have reverence for food. Once you have reverence for food, you will never avoid food or thing in the sense of anorexic thinking where you can't eat it because you're gonna gain weight or something like that because it's reverence. Oh my God, I'm so blessed to have this amazing, juicy, nutritious, high frequency, amazing food. And if you sometimes eat other foods, I don't eat only the most amazing food that I just picked from a wild place then still bless it with your intention say this is good for me at the moment and I'm benefiting from it and when you can make the best choices you can I always make good choices and I'm always prepared I always open the fridge and there's food but if sometimes it happens that you have to be less than perfect that's also okay we don't want to be dogmatic um, I've only seen problems with dogmatic behavior, so we want to have fluid flexibility and that tends to be the best because again, we're all going to be dead <laughs> really soon and perfection really is not the point here, it is expansion, expansion is the point, um, expansion of the consciousness and on a practical analytical level of course, calories and nutrients, those things are very important uh, because mistakes can be made as we learn and also on a self-acceptance self-love level remembering that your body will tell you where its best place is you cannot wish your body to be someone else's uh, body or to be at a certain weight or at a certain look just honor your body the way you the way you would honor a child the way you can honor a strawberry if you look at it if you just meditate for a whole month for a full hour on a strawberry every single day you will come to such profound realization about the sacred geometry about the beauty about the genius of this creation so pausing and seeing that miracles are all, all around us and this is totally a miraculous thing that it even exists in its perfection will totally allow you to reconnect to food to, and same goes for the body it's just as perfect in its imperfections we don't want two of the exactly same apples. If all the apples were produced somehow, not by nature, but some human synthesizing um, process, all the same, and all, every single grape is always the same, that would be the worst thing that would ever happen to Earth. So apply the same thing to your body. You are your unique you, and your beauty comes not from your looks, but from your awareness and consciousness. Your consciousness is who you are and the physicality is constantly evolving and expressing who you are it's morphing and of course i believe in uh, uh I, I try not to say things i believe in because i try to just not trigger anybody but i do believe in lives and um i don't think it's um i personally don't think but i mean everybody can think whatever 
works for them. I don't think it's anti-Christian or against the Christian uh, beliefs because I, there was before the third century uh, there was references to uh, that in uh, the biblical um, texts that were taken out in uh, uh, in the meetings because obviously the Bible is not in its uh, um, unedited state right now. Everything is has gone through human hands. So what we have is not necessarily the the pure everything text and everything so we have to again always find that bliss connection within because everything outside has been tainted by intentions and humans and so forth anyway so without going i feel that i will be doing probably less of these talk videos because i do not want to trigger anybody and nowadays i think as long as you're opening your mouth you can trigger someone and that's not my point. My point is to share beauty and to share inspiration and to share a dialogue or to start a dialogue and to in some way I don't know, in some way share and inspire but again at the same time oftentimes when you're speaking there is always one word that you can say out of the, uh, the straight line and it can trigger at least one person and I don't want to tiptoe as much as I do and I'm very careful with my, my words and I'm really careful with, with what I say and it's never meant to offend anybody but again <laughs> again and yeah so on a practical level your body might not want to be at a certain weight it might want to be a, a completely different body and you have to accept that and honor it because beauty lies again not in the uh, just details of the physical but it lies in your entire expression as a human I think I covered those was more spiritual aspects the uh, the main point of the video was reverence for food uh, intimate relationship with nature deepening the relationship with nature and also developing practices outside of food that nourish us such as books and being inspired about creation creativity um, learning um, art which is creativity and all of that because once we connect to nature i don't think we would ever have an a, a, a attitude of restriction and risk or because we become so blessed to be part of this entire symbiotic play uh, symbiotic relationship with nature and everything we're part of this oneness and we flow together and there is this connection and acceptance and self-forgiveness and when we uh, make a mistake or when we're not our best it's still okay because this is part of the human experience part of the human condition all right my friend is coming i can see because i'm recording on my phone and see she messaged me she'll be here very soon so i'm gonna go get ready and um I'll see you with another video. By the way, remember October is the month for deep core connection. Core connection means the core most important part of something. So we're going to work on the core most important, the most important part of our body, which also obviously always translates on each and every level of our emotions, of our mentality, of our beliefs, etc. So I'll see you on my website. October is the month of deep core connection awakening the core muscles, awakening the abdominal wall so that everything is really strong, powerful and connected. All right. Namaste.